welcome to the show. It is the 16th of February, and on the panel today, we've only got author Susan Holder and activist columnist Tim Montgomery. <laughs> Here's what we're discussing. First up, what a double by-election blow for the Conservatives. Is it time up for the Tories? Are they gone? Labour have overturned a total Conservative majority of 30,000 votes to take Wellingborough and then also Kingswood. The Conservatives' by-election losing streak is their worst since the Second World War. Is the writing on the wall for them? Then is Brexit to blame for the UK falling into a recession? Yesterday's financial shock followed claims by the banking giant Goldman Sachs that Britain's economy is 5% smaller as a result of leaving the EU. Is it fair to point the finger at Brexit? And then is it wrong to feed stray cats? Downing Street is backing plans to make cat and dog abduction a specific offence. But there are fears that people who unwittingly lure pets into their homes with food will be arrested. Should animal lovers shun stray cats to be on the safe side? If you've got a feline pal who you feed on the regular or your cat sneaks food from other families, do call in, send your pictures to us, jeremyvine at channel5.com. Then, comedy couple Paul Merton and Suki Webster will join us for the papers and everything else. At 11, oh, this is the, uh, the improv show they're going to do, they're going to tell us about. At 11.15, Storm will take your calls on whether asylum seekers should be allowed to work. At 12.45, Alexis Conran and friends will ask if it's okay for British Gas to make £750 million profit. Let me show you how to get in touch. Here we go, we've got cartoon character Charlie Brown here, 02078622222. Thank you, Charlie. That is the number. 16p a minute from a landline. Mobile phones may be dearer, as you know. And we've got the socials, Twitter now, X, TikTok, the Facebook, Threads, and Insta. Plus, if you look on YouTube, you can find our special Jeremy Vine on Five channel. There we go. What about this by-election? Well, I'll start with you, because you're obsessed with politics, Tim. How oh. bad is it? Have you had many guests who've burst into tears on your program before? <laughs> um, look, I'm a conservative. I think last time I was on your program, I was you know, admitting that I had a picture of Margaret Thatcher on my wall when I was a university. I'm a, I think I'm a through and through conservative, but I've had enough of the Conservative Party. <laughs> you know, we said we'd cut taxes, we put them up. We said we believed in home ownership. We don't build any houses. Control of immigration, one Brexit, one election, and yet immigration is up. After a we while... Promise growth and we've got a recession. Uh, yeah, everything we said we would do, we basically haven't, and we've done those things which we shouldn't do. It is over. For the and you tweeted party. that today, yeah, didn't you? Ab ab and over, potentially, not just at this election, but, you know, parties have no divine right to exist forever. And there's a volatility in the electorate these days, which means the verdict could be savage. My, w I just wish the by-elections we had yesterday were the general election, because I sense a growing sort of impatience from voters. They really have had enough, and you stretch the electoral elastic too much, mm. and I think it will be worse if Rishi Sunak does wait until Really? You think so? What do you think, Susan, that they, 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 they haven't even hit the bottom yet? Well, it, that might be true, and I also possibly feel like crying, but they're in a kind of another direction, because <laughs> the only party I ever joined was the Labour Party. I was a member of the Labour Party many years ago. I'm not a member You're now. wearing the right colour jacket today. Um, well, it's more pink <laughs> than red. But um, I, I'm not a member of the Labour Party anymore, and I absolutely don't feel at the moment I could vote oh, for them. Oh, really? So although I agree with you, we all think the Tories mm. have... have, have, have done everything mm. wrong and got it all wrong and we've all fed up of it but i do not feel there is a, a, a real reasonable alternative at the moment let's go to what's happened conservatives uh, have had a horrible night labor have overturned a combined tory majority of 30,000 votes to take the former conservative strolling strongholds of wellingborough and kingswood so this is kingswood here and this is let's see wellingborough there we go Basically, two strong Tory seats. The Tories have now clocked up 10 by-election defeats since the last general election, more than any Conservative government since the Second World War. The Labour leader, Keir Starmer, said the victories show people want change and are ready to put their faith in his party. Let's just have a look at these dramatic, more dramatic results. So, I mean, in a way, are they surprising? Do we, do we sort of know Labour are turning the town red? Kingswood here, Wellingborough here. Let's mention the winners. Damien Egan in Kingswood and Jen Kitchen, the new MP for Wellingborough. And this Labour bulldozer is really taking down the Tory majorities, not just in so-called red wall seats. These are the Conservatives' home seats, 
Wellingborough has been conservative for, since, what, 60, 55 years or so for all but eight years. It's incredible. In fact, let's focus on the rubble in Wellingborough here. As I say, conservative for years and years. Jane Kitchen wins. Look at this, right? Her share of the vote is up how much? 19.5%. The Conservatives have got this shocking fall, 37.6% down. Even if you add in the other right-wing votes of the Reform Party who are taking a lump out of the Conservatives, you don't get to Labour's share of the vote. So the Conservatives are strapped in here on this downward spiral. Forgive the analogy, but that's where... That's yeah. where, where <laughs> and it's on fire. That's <laughs> the best <laughs> gift ever, painting the town red. Let's have a look at these numbers. Wellingborough in particular, because it's such a big result, these are Conservative to Labour by-election swings since 2019. And you can see, as time goes on, they get bigger and bigger. That's the key thing. And if you look at the worst defeats to Labour at by-elections since 1945, first one, Dudley West, that was John Major, that's just before Tony Blair got in. Wellingborough, Rishi Sunak, 28.5%. So that is a... Ma in fact, you've got to go down third place. Tamworth was, was last year is 5% less, so that's a massive, massive swing. So if you're the Conservatives, alarm bells are ringing all over the place. And you're thinking, Tim, it's an interesting thought, as a Conservative, have the election tomorrow, because it's going to get worse. Yeah, uh, uh, that graph actually sort of makes my point for me. In the time since Tamworth, it's got 5% worse. And you know, I think Rishi Sunat's hope, and I understand if you're in Downing Street, why you don't want to leave, his hope is that something's going to come up, some scandal potentially for Keir Starmer or whatever, the reality is, you know, we're talking about the recession in a minute. The, the world at the moment isn't in a good place. Britain isn't in a good place. The much more likely is that week goes by, there's going to be worse news, and that's going to be blamed on the uh, Conservatives. So I want the Conservative Party to be in a position whereby it can still compete for power after the next election. I want the Labour and Party to be in a position where it can compete. Well, they're doing well, because, aren't they? Well, they're doing well in by-elections, but by-elections are always where people give the government in power a kicking, and it doesn't necessarily translate into a government... Because you, you vote for your local issues in a by-election, you vote for the Prime Minister that, 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 that you might get and the government in power when you're at the general mm. election. It is slightly different, I think. But also, I think, you know, it, it's been Labour's to win for a long time. Mm. There's been an open goal there that Rishi Sunak has got nowhere near. Well, they did well, in I actual think, fact, well, he keeps fouling up left, right and yeah, centre. Yeah, but, but it, it, to, 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 to interject here, 2019, they had an 80-seat majority. They had Boris Johnson. They, uh, Keir Starmer would never have expected to be in this position, but they've just gone from one well, cock-up to another. Well, he might not have expected it, but he should, he should be working towards it. Well, yes, I mean, I think... And he uh, should be giving us some idea yeah. of what his policies are, and he should be looking at, uh, at how actually, to kind of capitalise... He's capital actually going in the... Opposite direction, like of retreating is, from his green policy. Yeah. Well, well, so you, well, you want him to have some policies, basically? Well, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, call, me, call, so, me, old, yeah. call me old fashioned. I think they don't do that anymore. I think they do no, policies they after do elections anymore, now. But it's not yeah. good enough. I no. also want the, all the scandals and the whole anti-Semitism thing and to show that they've moved on from Corbyn. Right. And they're not doing any of that. So and I speak as somebody... I was once asked to stand by... Um, Alistair Campbell asked me if I would, I would stand at, uh, for, for Labour. And I couldn't do it then. And I definitely wouldn't do yeah. it now. That's very interesting. OK. I, it's reminding me just about 1996, so when the Conservatives were in a similar state, which you'll remember having followed it all to, I had lunch with a guy called Cecil Parkinson, ah, right, the classic yeah. Thatcher cabinet minister. And I said, do you think you can win this election? And he said, I'll never forget it, he said, for us, to, I think we can, for us to win, something very good needs to happen to us and something very bad needs to happen to Labour. <laughs> And that's the situation the Conservatives are in now. Mm. And you know what? In 97, it didn't. Neither thing's happened. Mm. And, and it's really dangerous to hang around waiting for, for that to happen. So let's take your calls on this. Is, the, the, is it gone? Is time up? You're just ringing the bell on it now. They're, they're locked in on the staircase going down towards the fire. Give us a call now, 0207 862 222. Or is it a Rishi problem? Change him? They can start again. We'd love to hear from you. OK, welcome back. We're live on Channel 5 with Susan and Tim. Later, we'll be asking if it's fair to blame Brexit for the recession. But first, after today's double by-election blow, is it time up for the Tories? 0207 862 222. Tim, Tim here is saying, look, they, 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 they better go for an election now because it could get worse for them. They're on the biggest by-election losing streak of any Tory government since World War II after losing last night Wellingborough and also Kingswood to Labour. The former Tory cabinet minister, Jacob Rees-Mogg, said Rishi Sunak's leadership remains solid 
and defended the party's <laughs> performance. Yeah, right. We've got used to by-election results being erratic. That is just something that happens. And so I don't think we should be surprised. And we should be, to some extent, reassured by the low level of turnout. It's absolutely striking. When you knock on people's doors in a by-election and you say, can I count on your support, normal thing that politicians say, um, and people say, no, I'm not voting. And you then say, but come a general election when it's a choice between Sir Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak. Then they say, well, we don't want Keir Starmer. So I think a general election focuses people's mind in a different way uh, from a by-election. This is the, the Conservatives that result in 2019. How, how far down they've gone since this stonking result? Because this was the best majority since, since 1987. Under Thatcher, Boris Johnson won them an 80-seat majority. And then the Mirror has said, look, if, if you take these by-election results from last night and you extrapolate them to a general, you end up with the map basically covered in these points of red. And quite a lot of bit of, of Lib Dem revival here in the South and the Southwest particularly, but Labour everywhere, not just reclaiming their red wall seats, but taking right into the fight into the the heart of the conservative areas too. So obviously that's just as, as the great Peter Snow would say, just a bit of fun. We can't tell. It's not a general election. But let's have a look at something. I want to ask our, our panelists this. If I come over to this, I've got some two two dates here on this on this easel for you. One is 1997 and one is 2019. Now this was Blair, right? And this was a disaster for the Conservatives who ended up after that election with 165 seats out of 650. 2019, we can remember this quite easily because I, th I think it's pretty much, give or take one or two, three, six, five. So we've got a lovely sort of range there. Disaster, triumph, one, six, five, three, six, five. Now, the question I want to know from, let's start with you, Susan, is whether they could go below one, six, five. Well, they could. Obviously, that could happen. I, I really don't think that that's... I mean, I hate to, to be on the same page as Jacob Rees-Mogg. This, this goes against all my principles. But what he just said there, I actually think... I do think you cannot necessarily extrapolate out from what we're seeing sure, in the by-election to, but I'm, to, to but the so fact you that it's going to be that, that kind that, of right? Yes, I think okay. it will be better. Okay, all right. Tim, do you think they're not going to get 365? Could they go below 165? 100%. No, really? Uh, partly because one of the things that also we saw last night was tactical voting. You know, the Lib Dems disappeared. They did. Not because they're going to disappear in the general election, yeah. but people will vote you know, for whoever get the, the Tory out. And, you know, in the Peter Bone seat, well, you know, actually his girlfriend stood as the candidate. Yeah. You know, the electorate decided they wanted to get rid of Peter Bone and the Tories thought it was a good idea to put yeah. up his girlfriend. It's like the contempt, you know, the, the party has at the moment. Yeah, but that's, that's because Bone but, said, as I understand it, unless you get my girlfriend in there, um, I'm going to stand myself as an independent. Know, yeah. So, so they and Rishi Sunak thought, oh, I don't really fancy that. And um, you know, I've already said, you know, sort of like the policy stuff that annoys voters. But it's this self-serving thing that the party communicates as well. The sense that we are a party for power rather than um, principle. And Let's so see. Uh, that 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 angers people. And I said, why it could be worse is I think they will vote tactically. Mm. And the opinion polls don't really capture that, which is yeah. why I am pessimistic. Well, we could we could mention, yeah, Lib, Lib Dem revival and Reform Party. If Reform... So they took 13% in, in Wellingborough. Reform. Now, you imagine if in every seat they take about 10% of the Tories. Yeah. That, that is, and that's the Brexit vote. And, and all if, that. if Farage actually stands and he becomes the face of reform, that 13% could easily be a lot more. Well, I think then we may be looking at Although Farage. Although, historically, he's actually never done that well. Apart no, from no. winning Brexit, yeah. but well, yeah. Apart yeah. From, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you stand in the right seat, you're going to win it. It's, yeah. it's not. Shelley in Newcastle, hi. Hi. Well, what do you think? Can they go below 165 if there's a general election? I don't think you can take much off this. It, I mean, um, if you look at the turnouts, very, very low. One of them was lucky if there was over 20,000 voted, not much more. I mean, they're, they're going like, oh, we've overturned 18,000. But one of, the, one of the seats, Labour hardly got any more votes than in the election. All right. And, and there would have been a lot of postal votes sent out as well before Labour made all the gaffes this week. Yeah. which might have changed it. Good point. Um, and I just think people are getting too het up. A lot of uh, Tory voters have stayed at home to protest, basically. So, so you think, actually, they've got... They're in with a shout of, of at least making a decent showing at the next election? Yeah, you've got the worst of two evils. I mean, Starmer's awful and <laughs> Sunak's awful. <laughs> Thank you, Shelley. For another party, we won't get them in.
<laughs> Thank you so much. Terry in Northamptonshire, hi. Are the Tories done for? Definitely. Right. Gone in 60 seconds, well, as, what, as they say. Everything that Tim said there has been spot on. Absolutely spot on. You know, us in Wellingborough, we're just treated with contempt, I think. So you're a Wellingborough voter, are you? I am. What do you and, think of uh, what, I, Peter Bone, the MP, you know, being ousted? Is that, did you want that or not? Well, I've, I've always thought he was a joke anyway. The only thing he wants to do is appear on TV. Well, he was on this show quite a lot. I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see him doing very much for Wellingborough. OK. So he, he was a Boris like, fan. People like myself just haven't bothered to vote. The only person that I would vote for at the moment would be Nigel Farage. So you are Brexiteer, Terry, and what the concert, you think the Conservative Party's moved away from that, has it? Yeah, definitely. So you... Hmm, interesting. In fact, you see, I've, I've heard a theory that Farage will be moved into Clacton as the candidate there by reform. Because well, that... And then he, but then does he even need to be an MP? As, as, as Tim's pointed out, he changed the history of Britain without ever going near the House of Commons. Thank you, Terry. Derek in Northamptonshire. You're a Tory supporter, Derek? I have been traditionally, yes, that's right. Are so, you in Wellingborough yourself? I'm a, f a few miles away from there. OK. Would you go and tell us, would, do you think the Conservatives are finished or can they bring people back? Well, I think these local elections may not necessarily be reflected to the same degree in national uh, elections, because partly because the turnout's relatively low, and also I think sometimes people use local elections to protest about dissatisfaction with the current... Uh, regime and the hope that that will result in changes. Yeah, that's what uh, Susan was saying, yeah. Exactly right, yes. And I, also an interesting point I've heard is that the combined Conservative and Reform vote actually was greater than the Labour vote, which tells me that people are not entirely happy with uh, Labour as an alternative to Conservative. I don't know, because I was adding them up earlier and they, I got to let... I'll have another no, that, that. that's true. That is true. He's right. It is true. Yeah. OK, so, so you think if they, if they could just stop reform standing, then they could beat Labour? Well, who knows what will happen? Um, it might be a close-run thing between the two. Who knows? But um, politicians have to reel off a list of issues facing the country and they seem to think that that will influence voters, but what they seem to be rather light on, so to speak, is solutions as to how they will resolve the issue that people are concerned about. Uh, I can only imagine that they may decide that uh, we have to re increase taxation, higher as it is, still further, in order to deal with um, the problems that people are concerned about. Well, he was trying, he was, he's been be thinking about... Outcome. Yeah, well, that, that probably won't help. I, so I, I'll just check this with Tim. So I was saying earlier, Labour 45.9%, Conservatives 25, Reform 13. You add the Conservative and the Reform vote, you get 37%. I think in Kingswood, the other seat last night, yeah. uh, the, the Tory and the Reform vote was greater than the... Uh, ah, OK. So in it, Wellingborough, it, it was a bit closer. Well, yeah. Wellingborough, not yeah. the same, yeah, because I, I think it, it wouldn't have even mattered if the Reform yeah. Party votes had gone to the Conservative. That's true in Wellingborough, but, not yeah. in Kingswood. OK, got, got it. Thank you. And Helen Harrison, by the way, was the, the candidate who's the, the partner of Peter Bone. And that's, you know, whatever happened there, we don't really know. But it's all a terrible, terrible mess. A dog's dinner for the Conservatives. And Labour are cleaning up, but you think they're cleaning up without telling us what they're about? Well, they're not. Well, they're cleaning up in by-elections, and I don't yeah. think that necessarily equates into a, into government. I, I don't know. This 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 is bad for the, the Conservatives. No question. We'd love your cause. Is it time up? Or actually, do we do we say no? No. Hold your nerve. You'll be fine on election day. 0207 862 double two. We'll see you very shortly. And presumably, you've seen that, Tim. You were born there. Yeah, I was. I only lived there for about uh, six months. My dad was in the armed forces, so I travelled around. But yeah. And um, it's, it, this is the this is the the four faced liar because yeah. all the, the four clocks are not synchronised with each other. Yeah, yeah it's uh, very Devonian actually in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Susan and Tim are with us this morning. Later, we're asking if it's fair to blame Brexit for the recession that we seem to be in. Now, more calls on whether it's time for the Tories to go. Is it time up for them after today's awful double defeat de defeat in the by elections? Joan Sheffield, what do you think? Hello, morning. Morning. Um, I was going to say the other day, actually, Jeremy, I just wanted to start with very briefly saying this. I decided it was inappropriate after your outstandingly amazing kind of tribute to Steve Wright. I've, I've got a lot of respect for you anyway, but my respect for you went up in my, my, massively, and I think I'm re representing viewers of how utterly 
touching and appropriate and professional you were. It was amazing. Oh, well, that's so I just want to start with that, Thank you. honestly. So answering the question, uh, I'm kind of with Tim with what he said about that he's a completely diehard, like an inverse uh, version of Tim that that he's a, he said is a diehard conservative, but he's got serious doubts kind of thing. And I'm a yes. complete diehard Labour voter, but I've got serious doubts about them. Um, and however, the the conservative government have been destroying people's lives. You know, it, it, their decisions that have, and policies that have been made are completely without consideration of the impact. They keep using the phrase, we're making difficult decisions. D difficult for who? Who do, who do those difficult de decisions actually rebound on? In, in which, is, which is us. Yeah. Us. I don't but think you sound very much like Susan, Joe, because yeah. Su Susan's got yeah, to say she so. wants to vote Labour. Susan said, yes. I've turned, I turned the TV down a little bit ago. So Go I on, well, let's let Susan <laughs> get in. Well, you, so, you, you, yeah. you turned the TV down just when I was speaking. <laughs> I, I, yeah. my, my husband <laughs> is probably <laughs> doing the same thing at home. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to that. <laughs> but what is... What I was trying what, to write what? notes to be concise. Hang on, Joe. Let, let, then my notes got out of hand. All right, let Susan speak. What, what do you think you would like to see from Labour, Joe? What are you looking for? What I don't want to see is that, which I think is going to happen, I do think that the Labour Party are going to get in at the next general election, although what you said about uh, local elections do not necessarily reflect on how people are going to vote in a general election. People are going to vote Labour just to get the Conservative what government what out. For? What would make and it, you... shouldn't, it should be more than that. Well, what do they have it? to say? What, is, what, what does Keir Starmer have to say, Joe? He has to... I think he's making decisions just to get elected. And in a way, is that the appropriate thing to do? Maybe. But it, it seems very... Mm. I didn't like Corbyn. I didn't think he was appropriate for the country. But at least he had some faith in his own in, in his yep. own policies etc sure. and there doesn't seem to be much um Oomph. Personally, I, mean, I would rather have Angela Rayner. Okay, you, thank you, Joe. Thanks so much. Character. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. I was over Christmas. I sat with someone from Liverpool, and funny enough, the subject of Margaret Thatcher came up. And you know, fact, people from Liverpool, he was typical, was not a fan of Margaret Thatcher. But he he said to me, and it just stuck with me. He said, "I always knew though that she was in politics because she mm. had a mission. She wanted to be there." because she had an idea of changing the country that she believed in. And he said, I don't see anyone on the national stage at the moment who I can absolutely say mm. that of. And voters can smell this constant tactical stuff. Mm. And Mrs Thatcher, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, Ronald Ray, there were politicians who absolutely were in politics for the right reason. Mm. The trouble is, and that's why I think both of us in different yeah. ways are unhappy. I'm not sure a lot of well, the politicians are in for the right reasons anymore. Well, what you're anymore. talking about is yeah. having a healthy respect for somebody, even if though you don't agree yeah. with their policies, which I think people could do back then because people like that existed. And you're right, and that's where Joe's speaking for the fact that, yeah, I mean, we, we, there's nobody, you don't know what you're voting mm, no. for. And it shouldn't be enough to vote against. We should be voting for something, okay. not just We've trying loads, to eradicate. We've got loads and loads of calls. Sorry to interrupt. John in Lancashire, what do you want to say, John? Well, um, where do you start, Jeremy and the panel? Um, I'm 65 years old. And uh, to be quite honest with you, um, you look at Britain now, you can't call it Great Britain. The country over the last 12 years has, has been absolutely in decline. A lot of that is down through lack of investment and mismanagement. Just let's look at the, what's going on at the moment. So you get a Tory, you get a Tory candidate knocking on my door. Will you give me a vote? This is what I'm going to say to him. And I've been a Tory, a Tory voter all my life, mm. so that's it's hard for me to say this. So number one, look at crime. Look at knife crime. Young kids getting stabbed every single day. Let's look at people, homeless people. Let's look at people having to use food banks that are working. Let's look at the state of the roads, potholes everywhere, on the investment. How they'll turn that round, I never know. The NHS, 
four years ago, there was 5,000 people that would wait more than 20, uh, sorry, 12 hours in A&E to see somebody. Now, that figure is 100,000. Yeah. 100,000. Then you look at the state of uh, other things as well. I know. I'm not, yeah, I, I hate to say, it, I, I feel we haven't got time to list all the things. I mean, because I, I, we literally haven't got time. I mean, is there anything they can say to get your vote back, John? No, they can't, because it's time for a change. OK, need, John, thank we you. We need to let... Yeah. Thank I'm, you so much. I'm just, I'm just moving on. So many people calling. Peter in Sheffield, are they gone, the Tories? Gone, completely gone? Oh, I do hope so. I think they've been absolutely wasted a vote. And I think the, the UK Reform Party is the party of the future. And I am never, ever going to vote Conservative again as long as I live. You can't even get dentists, for heaven's sake. It's the worst kind of pain you can have, to face, along with mental health problems. I suffer with mental health problems. And if I were to see a doctor for that, do you know what I mean? Oh, I'm going to have a hell years. of a job. Yeah, and you, you would take a year to get an appointment. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Pete. Yeah. Alan in London, what do you want to say? Good morning, panel. I am 74 years of age. I have been a Labour supporter since I was about eight years age. When my mother got a letter telling us we had to leave the house, leave the flat that we were living in, and you, you, you just try going to school when your mum's bawling her eyeballs out because she thinks we're going to be thrown on the street. <sighs> Dad used to say... Very, very importantly, never, ever forget about politics. The Tories' housing policy of the 1950s is almost as bad as their what, housing policy now. And when you think of the people who have to live in absolute disgust because of the Tories' way of what, running housing, please, please, if you are a Labour voter, do not forget what they've done over the last 14 years. In fact, over the last 60 years, right. okay. because they've done us no good. Thank you very much. Peter in Colchester, hi. Hello there. Any hope for the Conservatives or not? Well, I, I, I just feel that um, their leader, the, the, the best asset is, is Keir Starmer for the Tories, because mm. he is dull. <laughs> I hate to say this, but we need an attractive leader, somebody who's smart, who will appeal to women, um, I know that's a terrible thing to say, but this is what will get people out. Well, you say um, we uh, need an attractive leader. You're talking about Conservatives, are you? No, no, the Labour Party. Labour, oh, I see, right. The so Labour you want, Party, I mean, Rishi Well, you Sunak, can't change Mark leader. Dresser. Sorry? You can't change leader now. He's not done enough wrong. <laughs> well, they're not going to win. He may be a brilliant politician, but they do need somebody who's attractive. And I find Keir Starmer... Dull. Well, maybe we I'm need sorry. dull. This is the weird thing. I thought it was interesting, the, 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 the suggestion from somebody earlier about Angela Rayner. I I, 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 as a woman, I do find that an interesting prospect, to be honest. All right, Peter in North Yorkshire, hi. Hello. Peter, we've got, just got space for you. What do you want to say, my friend? Well, um, th there is a precedent. Uh, in 1992, Georgia um, was the uh, premier. Uh, and Mr. Kinnock uh, led Labour. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kinnock thought he was going to win. In fact, he had a party in Sheffield. We're all right. Do you remember that? There. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Be bear in mind yeah. that, that Labour the were behind in the polls, OK? So, so it, it was different. No, they were ahead. Don't, uh, not fractionally. No. Go on. Don't count your chickens before they are hatched. No, <laughs> you're so, well, you're right about that. You're right about that. Yeah. And they, but that relies on what Tim was saying, is Labour to do something very badly wrong. Well, I, I, I've, I've been involved in, in local politics for a long time. And um, where, and particularly in places like Sheffield, which is solid Labour, of course, the father used to say monkeys in red coats would get in in, in Sheffield. But uh, Well, you had Nick Clegg up there, so, yeah. Yeah, but he, but he got kicked out, uh, and, and they put an, uh, a man in who, in fact, is now in prison. Yes, yeah, he is. Good. That's right. Yeah, that's been a bit of fun. Thank you very much, Peter. Thanks for all your calls on this. Gosh, politics never ceases to...